tell me, how did you first crack into the business? And when did you, uh, what did you do to get your first gig? And what was it? Well, I just did stand up. And uh, the odd thing with stand-up is, I just wanted to be a stand-up for my whole life. But um, something happened, like, I think, with because Co Cosby had a very uh, popular and funny sitcom. Mm -hmm. That they started thinking stand-ups would make good actors. <laughs> but it's a actually the opposite is true, because <clears throat> as a stand-up, you, uh, you, you know, you're in... You're just all by yourself. You're not talking to anyone else, mm -hmm. and the audience is sort of like the enemy. You know, it's sort of like you have to control them and make them laugh and so forth. But it's just you, not relating to anyone, just right. talking to yourself basically. And so uh, it's the worst training ground for an actor. <clears throat> so what do you think your your uh your comedy style is it, is it cynical or what, you know what's your uh, what's your what really gets you gets your creative juices flowing? Well, lately I've turned to the uh, the highly uh, <clears throat> introspective, like personal. Uh -huh. uh, I base my comedy on. Uh, uh, like my heroes have not been comedians, but rather like uh, writers and uh, one singer, Bob Dylan. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hemingway and Gertrude Stein and people that just uh, learned a lot from those people because they're highly, uh, they never use a big word. Uh, they repeat things mm -hmm. that are important. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now my comedy is, is just about uh, myself. It's not a, I don't comment on anything. Uh -huh. and it's uh, like Dylan at the 65 Newport Festival. <laughs> His press conference? No, when he went electric. Oh. He's got a broad plan now in a movie. You hear that? No. Yeah. Yeah, Hillary, no, what's her name? Uh, it's like uh, Hillary Duff or one of those. No, Kate Beckinsdale. Really? Yeah, so yeah. I, don't, I don't know how Bob feels about that. <laughs> Bob's pretty down to earth, though. I think, uh, you know, he still loves the music. He's jamming. I went and saw Bob Dylan in concert. Right? Yeah. And he's, he just has complete contempt for the audience. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and you can't even understand the fucking songs. <laughs> But uh, Ringo Starr was in the audience. Uh huh. So Dylan like recognizes him like halfway through the concert. Yeah. He just stops the song. And he goes Ringo, <laughs> Ringo. He just keeps saying Ringo. He said it about nine times, right? So finally, like a spotlight goes on Ringo Starr. Yeah. And he's all embarrassed and everything. He's like Ringo, what's up? Like he's not even on stage, you know. He's just talking to Ringo Starr. So, but everybody thinks it's pretty cool. Yeah. So it, anyways, finally, Dylan like snaps out of me and goes, I gotta go back and do this thing. He called it a thing. He goes, I gotta go back and do this thing. He goes, any song you want to hear? And then like Ringo Starr goes, uh, Maggie's Farm. And then he goes, we already did that one. <laughs> and everyone was like laugh because you can't, literally can't recognize his song. Right. <laughs> but I understand what he's doing because it's like, let's say you told a story to someone, mm -hmm. and then the guy said, hey, tell it to this other guy. Then you're going to change the story, because uh, you're not going to say the exact same words. You feel like a jackass. Mm -hmm. So that's what Dylan seems to do in his art. Yeah. He goes, yeah, I'll do the song, but I'll change it all around, mess it up. See what it sounds like. Is that the same thing with comedy? Uh... Well, yeah, what I like to do is, like, I, I don't, I never memorize anything. So I have the, uh, I know what the joke is, and uh, all I know is the punchline. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and then uh, up to there, I just meander around until I get to the punchline. As long as you know where you're going, uh, you're free to uh, say whatever you want. Yeah. Because you know there's an ending. 
How do you not laugh sometimes when you're standing next to, you know, Chris Farley or uh, Tina Fey? Or... <laughs> with Chris Farley, the first let me, uh, you, you gotta laugh with Chris Farley. You can't not laugh. Uh -huh. I mean, because he's the funniest guy ever. <clears throat> I remember he used to be obsessed with Belushi, and I always go, no, you're way funnier than Belushi, you know? Yeah. Shouldn't try to be like somebody less funny than you. <laughs> but he was a guy, he could literally could make uh, smart people laugh, dumb people laugh, old people laugh, young people laugh, you know, smart, dumb, people who liked him, people who didn't like him. I never saw him not make someone laugh. I never saw it fail. Mm. And also, he would do it 24 hours a day. Uh -huh. What about Dennis Miller? What's he like off off stage? Oh, Dennis has been very kind to me. Uh, I wrote my first. He gave me my first job writing for uh, the syndicated talk show when I was a stand-up. Mm -hmm. uh, and also with Update, with Weekend Update, he changed Weekend Update completely uh, to where it had a stand-up's mm -hmm. sensibility, mm -hmm. which no one has done since, uh, except me. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, the other ones always do it like they pretend to be newscasters, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so if, if Dennis hadn't done that, I probably wouldn't have been able to do uh, Update. And what do you think about the cast now, right before the strike? The cast now? Yeah. Um, well, I've watched a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've watched Saturday Night Live like every week since it started, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, so, uh, hold on, man, let me get a cigarette. Yeah. Well, we're well, done we, shaving. We can go, yeah.